So many chefs have gotten onto Hell's Kitchen for seemingly no reason. Like, they should have never gotten onto the show in the first place. And this contestant here is a prime example of that. These are some of the worst chefs to have ever been featured on Hell's Kitchen. And I'm starting things off with a bang. You look like a female version of f***ing Hannibal Lecter. Put your f***ing tongue in and concentrate. Quite the description, huh? And that tongue lashing you just heard was directed towards Sharon from season 4. So what happened is, during the signature dish challenge, Sharon presented something that ultimately didn't meet the high standards of the competition. And Ramsay didn't hold back in letting her know. You know damn well that isn't up to scratch. Hell's Kitchen. Her first service in the kitchen only added to her troubles. Ramsay called her out for an unseasoned risotto. Something, something, it's always the seasoning. And when asked to taste her own dish, she couldn't see the issue. Oh, come on, Sharon. It's like rice pudding. Instead of taking responsibility, Sharon attempted to shift some of the blame onto her teammates. That's not just my fault, and it's too bad that Chef Ramsay didn't see that. Later, in a bid to redeem herself, she ended up preparing more risotto than needed, which only confused matters and discouraged Ramsay further. Which one are you cooking? This one. Whose is this one? I don't know, I'll get rid of it. Oh, come on, Sharon. The final blow came when her refire, intended to be an improvement, was rejected because of an overwhelming amount of garlic. <laughs> Sharon, enough's enough. I'm going to put some more makeup on. I mean, I always add more garlic than it says to on the recipe, but there are limits. Yeah, she was removed from her station right then and there. However, during prep before the second service, her confusion over the recipes led Corey to step in and guide her through the tasks, which didn't sit well with the team. Our team has a problem right now, just worth sharing. It puts us at a really big disadvantage. And things didn't improve during dinner service when Sharon was assigned to the meat station. Ramsay quickly noticed that she had placed cooked meat near raw meat, something that we know all too well from Kitchen Nightmares that is never a good idea. And as the service continued, Sharon's struggles persisted. She forgot to send out a beef dish, causing further delay and frustration. When Ramsay tried to see if she was communicating with Christina, her response was... Well, it wasn't a response, actually. It was more like nonsensical blabbering. No, I did it. I did it early. I thought it was coming. She just yelled it was coming. Assuming Christina would be ready, she didn't bother communicating, leading Ramsay to bestow upon her a title for the ages. You're not really a chef, are you? You're just a showgirl with a big feather coming out your ass. Man, you think you've heard it all. But the breaking point came when a halibut dish prepared by Jason was sent back and Ramsay accused Sharon of slowing down the entire operation. In response to the mounting issues, Ramsay made the difficult decision to shut down the restaurant. By this point, Sharon's inexperience and inability to handle the pressure of Hell's Kitchen had become glaringly evident, ultimately leading to her downfall in the competition. Surprisingly, she wasn't nominated for elimination by Corey. However, Ramsay decided to make a tough call. Two services. You haven't convinced me that you can cook. He chose to eliminate Sharon outright, citing her consecutive poor performances. But Sharon wasn't convinced. I don't think Gordon liked me from the start. He just had the wrong image of me. Well, she didn't have the skill, but she sure had the confidence. And next up, all I can really say is him. Really? I came out here to f***ing lose, I'm f***ing furious. But hold on, because things were about to get really intense. Hey, from Sticky, I love y'all, everything, Leia. Viewers have rightly pointed out that his random outbursts and erratic personality definitely made him difficult to work with. And, well, I don't disagree. My team better care as much as I do, because if not, I'm going to start chopping them off real quick. And if I have to, I'll play Blue Kitchen by myself. Yeah, he ended up costing their team the win in the very next challenge. That is brawl, and it's too bad, because had that been in for another two minutes... You see, Brett first appeared in Season 14, where his passion for food and strong desire to win were evident. No denying that. Unfortunately, he faced a setback due to a previously diagnosed slip disc, which forced him to withdraw from the competition. Uh, get better. Thank you. Okay? 
Thank you, Chef Ramsay. It was an honor. Thank, Thank you. you. I will take this to the grave. However, he made a comeback in Rookies vs. Veterans, with even more passion this time around, and also some pretty interesting details about his life. For instance, when asked about how many kids he had, he said, I'm sure there's more out there that I don't know about, they don't want to tell me about, to be honest with you. Nah, maybe like six. Ah, uh, somebody's been busy. Anyway, there were instances where he, along with other team members, particularly Scott Lee, were accused of being bullies. The situation got so intense that, despite not having a strong bond with Trev, he ended up being the favorite among the men, and what's more, he even had fans of the show on his side. What flavor is it, banana or carrot? Oh. <laughs> but he wasn't invincible by any means, since Brett did come under fire for casually saying something as hideous as this. Raw passion from raw emotion, homie. And I'm a muscle ass nigga. Many people have called him out on this, saying they lost respect for him immediately. Personally, I think he should have gone home during the 11th service. He not only ignored every hygiene standard in the book by cooking and sending out halibut in a dirty pan. Look what I'm just being given now. Your pan's filthy, dirty. I just look at the. But also threw caution and safety standards to the wind by doing something just so monumentally stupid. The salmon is ice cold. Heard I get it back in. No, no, I'm to come here. Yeah, the raw salmon was meant for Malcolm Smith's five month pregnant wife. A hell of a baby shower gift if I've ever seen one. Speaking of which, Jeremy from season 11 immediately came to mind when I sat down to make this list. Right from the start, this dude was lost. In the signature dish challenge, it quickly became apparent that Jeremy was pretty clueless about what he was cooking despite his self-proclaimed title as a lead cook. When asked about the type of meat he used, Jeremy hesitated, going back and forth over whether it was a ribeye or not, before eventually settling on a belief that it was. What well, no, you? it's not a ribeye, chef. I think it's, uh, I think it's ribeye, I'm sorry. To make matters worse, Ramsey didn't love the texture of his dish. When you slice into a steak of that quality, you destroy the fibers and the texture because you're stuffing it. The next day, during prep, it seemed like the men's team had their act together, working cohesively and with focus. Unfortunately, Jeremy was the exception. He appeared completely lost and bombarded his teammates with a barrage of questions. I don't know how to make a polenta. I'm just a little concerned right now. Man, I don't myself right now. But the real challenge came during the service, when Ramsey was calling out orders. He called for three halibuts, one bass, and one chicken. Jeremy, however, struggled to relay the order correctly, even needing Dan's correction, much to Ramsey's visible frustration. And poor Ramsey had to call out the ticket again. But something happened. The three, three, the three, three halibuts, the two, two, uh. Come on, what's up with you? By the way, Anthony had the perfect response. Jeremy, he's telling it to you. Just say it right back, man. Pretty sure birds can do that. That never gets old. However, Ramsey's patience had reached its limit, and he had to repeat the ticket for the third time. Yet, Jeremy still struggled to repeat it correctly. To, uh, uh, get out! Uh, yeah, he had it coming. Not surprising why his performance kept getting progressively worse. On the first order during the breakfast service, he failed to provide any answers, which understandably infuriated Ramsey. To make matters worse, when confronted about his inaction, his confession was, well, hilariously bad. Can I get an answer from you? Yes, you can. What was that callback? I wasn't able to hear it, Chef. Oh. The issues continued to pile up as he struggled with basic communication and timing. When Anthony called out 30 seconds for his omelet, Jeremy seemed unable to grasp the concept, repeatedly asking how much time he needed. Can I walk this plate? No. Hurry up, Sam, it's just dying. Come on. Walk your back, watch your back, come on. Things went from bad to worse when he presented a croissant at the pass, but a critical component, the smoked salmon, was missing. Instead of efficiently resolving the situation, Jeremy walked to the back of the kitchen and asked Dan for a plate, seemingly without any awareness of the urgency of the service. What's even more surprising is that the plate he brought to the past turned out to be, well, you have no idea. Some disgusting pig brought me the sample scrambled eggs. 
Need I say anything more? It was the sample plate that Ramsey cooked an hour earlier. And to put things into perspective, this viewer thought it would be better to have five Rajas than one Jeremy. Yeah, he was that bad. Which is why, despite being on the winning team that night, he was eliminated. But nothing could shake his delusion. And above all, I'm a great chef. Oh man, this guy was something else. But you know what? I think Charlene from season 21 was right up his alley. Despite showing promise with her signature dish, she quickly went downhill. Working alongside Billy at the meat station, her inattention to Ramsay's orders was a cause for concern. Her initial failure to provide a timely answer regarding the cooking time for chicken drew Ramsay's ire, further indicating her lack of focus. Hey, you should be moving there. You're not staring at me. When she finally responded with a 15-minute estimate, mind you, it only takes six, her rationale was something else. Uh, was you know what? I was trying to overestimate. A wrong number. Yes. Yeah. 15 minutes. Wait, what? Come again? The situation escalated as it was revealed that Charlene had delayed starting the chicken, which I'm sure you can guess how Ramsey felt about it. How can we be this bad? We're not even moving at snail pace. We're not even moving at all. Eventually, she relinquished control of the meat station to Billy entirely, who ended up serving raw chicken, the first in a series of events that led to the blue team's expulsion from the kitchen. Cole Wellington and pink chicken. And now that I think about it, I have another name from season 21. O'Shea made raw chicken wings during the second challenge, and despite his experience working at a lobster restaurant before, he failed miserably in the whole lobster prep challenge. A sort of claw, a knuckle, a claw missing, four legs, where's your claw? What a shame. When he sliced into an overcooked Wellington, he didn't respond to Ramsey, leading to frustration on his part, who clearly wanted more engagement and communication from the team. This lack of response ultimately resulted in overcooked to Wellington's being served. It's frustrating because I'm trying to get the meat out and I'm getting which meat need to be rested. Everything is just going haywire. Oh, shit. And his troubles continued when he failed to provide Ramsey with a time estimate for the order of a two-top celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. Although he managed to send up his lamb, it turned out to be undercooked as well. Get out! Oh, crap. But at least Charlene and O'Shea were better than this next contestant who had the shortest and funniest tenure on Hell's Kitchen. I'm out. My bags are packed. You can kiss my First, his signature dish was just plain awful, and it wasn't anywhere near worth the sticker price. What is that? Sausage gravy over biscuits. Sausage gravy? Yes. Over biscuits? Yes. Next, he displayed a complete lack of respect by making a bunch of sexist comments. Women are the best at cleaning, so it's right up their alley. Ah, way to go, jackass. During service, his ineptitude in the kitchen became painfully evident. He was caught putting raw lamb in the oven without searing or seasoning it first. And the fucking lamb goes in the oven like that. No salt, no pepper, no seasoning. His attempts to interfere with his teammates' tasks, such as cooking spinach, only added to the chaos. Ramsey had to intervene, instructing him not to touch the spinach and to focus on the lamb. But he still kept failing miserably at preparing the lamb, which led to a furious Ramsey discovering a massive pile of wasted meat on the station. Cue the voice cracks. Look! 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 What the fuck is this? This was the breaking point, and Ramsey swiftly eliminated him. Get out! Pile of and fun fact, many viewers think that he was a plant, mainly because Robert was returning that same season, so they probably needed an excuse to make him return. But hey, I don't believe in this theory personally. Hear me out. I don't think his elimination was scripted since someone was definitely going home the first night anyway, and Robert still would have been assigned to a team. But what I do believe is that absolutely nobody could stand this next contestant. You can kiss my big fat Bye, Chef Ramsay. She was similar to Louie, only twice as pathetic. And, well, I think her signature dish was her on a plate. The dish resembles you to a tea. Boring. In the next dinner service, Nicole was stationed at the fish station with Joy. 
Her issues with attention and clarity were evidence early on when she couldn't recall who was responsible for scallops, which just made a huge mess of things. As Joy attempted to lead the station, Nicole's struggles persisted, and she eventually gave up on cooking the scallops altogether. Ramsey confronted her about it, which ended up making things worse. If you don't put any effort into it, do me a favor, take that apron off and f off home. Yes, chef. Nicole's inability to work on a team and her plain old bad attitude were clear barriers to her success. During prep, her not remembering the recipe showed that she was way out of her depth. I take five duck tortellini and drop it in the thing. The dinner service made that even more clear, with a lobster risotto not having any lobster in it and another with way too much pepper. The result? The boot. That is so peppery. It's actually started discoloring. She wasn't any more graceful in defeat either, since she made clear how much she respected Ramsay on the way out. Good night. I don't give too fine what he thinks and what he says. What a charming lady. Now, do you remember the winner of Hell's Kitchen season 10? If you think it's Christina Wilson, then you definitely haven't seen this. Is Tavon. <laughs> How humiliating is that? Man, this dude really left a legacy. I mean, he crashed and burned. Sorry, froze. But I mean, I guess he wasn't completely useless, since Ramsey used him as a bad example. <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> First, he whipped up a dish with shrimp, scallops, and crab. But it ended up being drenched in vinegar, which Ramsey found hideous. How much vinegar did you put in there? I like the drizzle. Drizzle? During dinner service, Tavon was on the appetizer station with Guy and Royce. He somehow managed to send up a raw pigeon. This pigeon's that raw it can still fly. Touch it. Stone f***ing cold and raw. Ramsey was so confused that he questioned if he was really an executive chef. Are you executive chef? Do you actually cook in your restaurants? Yes, I did. I mean, he deserved to be mocked. He was the cause of so much waste. Expensive hand-dived scallops. Look, you sabotage them. And the scallops, oh, the scallops. They were sliced so badly that they, wait, I can't possibly come up with a better analogy than this. Tavon treated those scallops like a homeless rat. Ramsey was furious and asked why he was messing up so badly. To which Tavon simply laughed it off. Imagine laughing in the face of Gordon Ramsay of all people. The audacity. When Tavon was asked to rate his performance, he compared himself to a prep cook thrown on the line. Ramsay wasn't having it and said he was more like, well, in the spirit of letting these guys make the quips, just listen for yourselves. Well, that's way off my estimate. I would have said dishwasher on a shit day. Ouch. Tavon was thrown out of the competition, and no, he didn't take it well. Chef Ramsey, you're a f***ing douchebag. Fast forward to the present, and his business named Celebrity Chef Tave has extremely bad reviews online. People who took his classes called him an absolute walking disaster and have accused him of scamming. Apparently, people purchased or booked his classes, went to the place where the class was being held, but Mr. Executive Chef didn't bother showing up. Absolutely no information about it being canceled or moved somewhere else. They even tried to call but couldn't leave a message because the voicemail was full. Well, it looks like nothing's changed. But this next contestant's performance in season 19 was characterized by a series of mistakes and a distinct lack of focus. Doesn't narrow it down much, I know, but stick with me here. Elliot's rice-encrusted salmon didn't impress Ramsay, who was disappointed that the skin was removed. You replaced it with a blitzed brown rice with sesame. I'm going to give you a two out of five. Later, during the creative shrimp challenge, Elliot presented a sautéed white shrimp with a spring vegetable succotash. Unfortunately, Ramsey found the succotash to be a greasy clump of vegetables, leading to yet another failure. And that's it, just sautéed vegetables. The time really caught up to me, chef. It's just a clumpy, greasy pot of vegetables. His struggles continued during the dinner service when he was assigned to the garnish station alongside Cody. Drew's request for time went unanswered, and Ramsey was rightfully frustrated. 
questioning why Elliot was just standing around without actively cooking anything. What the f are you doing? Get involved, Elliot! Yes, Help your team! Yes, well, it looks like he had given up. And that's exactly what he did. Now, he's he's standing, up, shut him! He's fing standing there doing jack shit! In his plea for redemption, Elliot admitted to losing focus and direction during the service, but tried to separate his performance in the kitchen from his personal character. Ramsey, however, didn't hold back and pointed out that Elliot's inaction was a significant issue. How do you lose focus when you did nothing? Good catch. When asked if he believed he was better than Drew, this is what he said. The answer is no, chef. Give me a jacket. With that, Ramsey made a straightforward, easy decision. You see, he just doesn't tolerate such a lack of self-esteem. And what a better way to finish than with a universally hated, emotionally stunted man-child. Who won Hell's Kitchen and has a pocket full of money and has to beat women off with a stick for God's sake. During the signature dish challenge, Ramsey's verdict on his dish was brutal. And not only did Jason's culinary skills fail to impress, but his obnoxious comments about women were equally disturbing. He showed a complete lack of respect by making offensive remarks about losing to a girls team and implying that women's abilities were limited to ironing contests. We're gonna win because we're men. This ain't the dust and housekeeping challenge here. Yeah, spoiler alert, they lost the challenge. And his performance was especially shit. Hands on my desk, please. Huh? You mac? Did you f the chicken? He didn't even bother showing up to service, instead going outside to smoke and pick at his toes. No, I am not kidding. And Ramsey had to play the nagging mother to get him working again. <laughs> When he finally got to the appetizer station, things didn't get better. He sent out a terrible, terrible risotto. Can we taste it? No. <laughs> taste that. You, taste that. Yikes. Everything he touched, he ruined. And Ramsey's patience wore thin as he repeatedly called out his incompetence. You can't even get two dishes together. That's how shit you be. I don't want any more embarrassment. His turn at the fish station was no better as he served raw fish and had the audacity to deny it. It's not mine. How dare you? It's just come back from the table. Oh, okay. This led Ramsey to shut down the restaurant. In the dessert phase, his inability to handle souffles and his suggestion to rub sugar around the rim mixed with butter and cocoa powder left Ramsey frustrated. Sugar, butter, and the cocoa powder, and try to see if that keeps him from sticking. That was easily the worst meltdown Ramsey had over a contestant's incompetence. But again, he wasn't just a shitty cook. He couldn't help being a sexist prick every chance he got. I don't think the girls have a clue what they're doing. But what do you expect without a man over there to lead them, of course? Jason had zero redeeming qualities. Absolutely none. Ah, if only you were more in tune with your emotions to care. Well, maybe if I would have cried like some old pansy, some chick, you know, maybe I'd be back upstairs chilling right now. I didn't set it up, Chef, so I- set it up? Danae set it up. She can't cook asparagus, she snores, and it keeps us all awake. These are the contestants who straight up betrayed their teammates. And how about starting things off with this contestant from the All-Stars season? So, it was the Italian night dinner service. Michelle was assigned to the meat station, while Manda was in charge of preparing the pasta dishes. For those of you who didn't know, Manda has celiac disease, so she couldn't taste the pasta herself. And so she went for the next best thing and asked Michelle for her opinion instead. Michelle tasted Manda's pasta and nodded in approval, saying it was good. Taste that for me. Is that done? Mm. 30 more seconds. Okay. So far, so normal. Right? However, unknown to Manda, Michelle had ulterior motives. Ramsey tasted it and, well, what do you know? The first batch of pasta returned to the kitchen undercooked. It looks like a lot, chef. It's no, just taste raw. it. Just taste it. Is raw. It's crunchy as Manda was puzzled because she trusted Michelle's judgment. Michelle, on the other hand... I can tell when pasta's done just by looking at it, so Manda should be able to do it too. So were you blind while checking Manda's dish? Or, uh, what do you call not being able to taste? Anyway, Manda made a second attempt in hopes of getting it right this time. 
But as if she learned absolutely nothing, she sought Michelle's opinion again. Michelle, in turn, claimed the pasta was fine. Again. I need a mouth. Here, Michelle. It's done. Michelle says the is done. But thanks to Elise, it was revealed that the pasta was still raw. And you wouldn't believe how nonchalant Michelle was about the whole thing. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. My bad. The first time I could excuse as an honest mistake. But twice? Nah, I don't think so. And she was so unapologetic about it. Michelle was fooling no one. Viewers saw right through it, and Manda also realized that she was being misled. Good job. Me twice now. Well, at least she didn't go in for a third round of punishment. But this next contestant exposed herself for the conniving, self-absorbed prick that she was during her run on the show. Witnessing Heather's struggle on the appetizer station in the third service brought a wicked gleam to Sarah's eye. Some kind of perverse, sadistic pleasure. She didn't just observe, she took pleasure in Heather's challenges, making a snide comment about the risotto too. I couldn't have graduated culinary school without making risotto. It's not my first rodeo. <laughs> in the fourth service, she was even more conniving. Tasked with the fish station, she forewent all pretenses of teamwork. Uh, Sarah, are we ready, yes? Yeah, I was waiting for her call, Steph. Called it three times. Her lack of communication with Rachel, despite repeated calls, disrupted the whole kitchen's flow. Yet, the extent of her deceit went beyond that. When Virginia asked if she was set with her turbot, Sarah brazenly lied claiming she was. How close are you to the turbot and the tortellini? I'll, I'm ready and waiting for your call. Can we start reading these plates though? Trusting her word, Virginia sent her Wellingtons to the pass, only to discover Sarah hadn't even begun cooking the turbot yet. And Ramsey wasn't pleased with either of them. Where's the turbot? Chef, in the, I haven't fired it yet. In the aftermath, Sarah's reaction was chillingly remorseless. She seemed pretty pleased that her underhanded plan went, well, according to plan. She did start cooking it, Chef. So now you want to start lying to me. I'm not lying to you, Chef. She laughed silently as Virginia faced Ramsey's wrath for what he saw as sabotage. Sarah didn't speak up and say, Chef, I did tell her that I was ready. She should have at least spoken up and said something. Damn right she should have. In a word, it just really sucked to see Sarah put Virginia through that. Did I misunderstand you when I heard you say you were ready whenever I am? Uh, it was tortellini. I didn't hear it turbo. But here comes one of the most unworthy winners of HK, Ariel Malone of season 15. And her betrayal during the second service was deviously underhanded. Two snapper, three chicken, I'm dying. That's gonna be five to the window shot. What's wrong with the snapper? While Mia stepped away for a moment, Ariel pounced on the opportunity, snatching her snapper and serving it up raw. We never said it was ready. Ariel come and grabbed it and took it up. Oh my God, seriously. But when it came time to own up to it, Ariel conveniently sidestepped responsibility, refusing to admit to her blatant sabotage. Who cooked the snapper? Ariel come say it. Oh, chef, my bad. I brought another one. But no. She stood there, letting Meese take the fall. God, talk about spinelessness. Fortunately, it earned her some rightful ire from Meese and Danny. You don't touch somebody else's dish. Then came the elimination nomination following the third service loss. Who is now finally up for elimination? Meese and, and um, Amanda. Did I hear that right? Meese and Amanda. But instead of sticking to the team's consensus, Ariel kept plotting behind everyone's back. She backstabbed Vanessa by scheming to get her eliminated while pretending to follow the team's agreed upon plan. Chef, our second nominee is Vanessa. At dismissal, Ariel shamelessly defended her underhanded tactics, citing Ramsey's supposed question about the team's weakest links. But let's call a spade a spade. Ariel's move was a manipulative, self-serving ploy that completely shattered the team's internal trust. Sure, the team had struggling members, but Ariel's actions reeked of disloyalty and cowardice. It wasn't just about the elimination, it was about trust and integrity which Ariel threw completely out the window. <sighs> now, 
that reminds me. Mia from season 18 is largely considered a fan favorite. But despite her popularity, there's this one moment I just can't let slide. And it went down during Tilly's sweet 16th birthday service. Happy birthday, Tilly! Chef the chef, let's go, duty. Tasked with the fish station alongside Ariel, her errors were not just glaring, but downright embarrassing. Can you get a bit more batter on the fish, please? More, more, more batter on the fish, make more it thicker. Batter. Yes, chef. Sous chef Jockey rejected her fish for not being battered enough. But the real catastrophe came with her refire. It emerged from the kitchen raw. It's, you touch it! It's ice cold, chef. It's ice cold! And Ramsay was beyond angry. Wait for it. Give me the head and the towel, I'll put it back in the water. Mia. There it is, right on point. Eventually, their team ended up losing the service. Mia found herself in a hot seat of her own making. But instead of taking responsibility for her abysmal performance, she tried to deflect blame by pointing the finger at Kane, citing problems with the ahi tuna earlier in the service. Your tartare was getting sent back because it wasn't that sliced, sliced properly. properly. Yeah. Yeah. Mia's downfall wasn't just about her poor performance. It was about deception and betrayal. Still, that didn't stop her from trying to squirm her way out of accountability. When I came to my station, I didn't have batter done. I didn't set it up, Chef. So Who I set it up? Kane set it up. When Ramsey questioned her capability, Mia tried throwing Kane under the bus again claiming that Kanae's prep failure led to her struggles during service. However, Kanae, backed up by Ariel, Regardless of who's set up, all stations were set up on time, so let's she stop talking about that. Game right now. Made it clear that the batter was prepared as needed during prep, exposing Mia's attempt at deflecting blame as nothing but a lie to save face. I, I started making the batter as soon as we got into the kitchen. She's trying to play the blame game. Damn right she was. But that wasn't the end of Mia's deceit. When questioned why she believed she deserved to stay over Roe, she claimed to have communicated with her team and taken responsibility for her actions. I was communicating the whole night. I do take ownership of my station. I'm a team player and I'm a leader too. However, her actions on the line and her attempts to blame others indicated quite the opposite. Like, I get it's a competition, but geez, have a little bit of decency. Now, let's talk about Baby Spice. Hey, Baby Spice, as long as you're okay, right? No, Chef. Here's my food everybody else. Well, on the meat station, Sabrina showed her true colors in the very first service, when she decided to go against her team's strategy. When Ramsey cautioned her to wait for Lisa's scallops before starting her Wellingtons, Sabrina forged ahead without paying that bit of advice any attention whatsoever. Sabrina, hold off on that. We need the salmon and the tagliatelle first before anything else. Dude, I can't wait! Ignoring even more advice from Gail, she was hell-bent on sending out her Wellingtons early. I just spent like 20 minutes cooking all this, letting it rest, doing it right, you know? As if that was gonna go well. Why are you throwing them under the bus? I'm not, Chef. What can I do with it? Nothing, Chef. Oh, I think she totally deserved being up for elimination that night. You are, quite frankly, the most selfish cook in here. Ramsey's justified criticism didn't phase Sabrina. Instead, she stubbornly defended herself during the plea, indirectly pointing the finger at Lisa's age. She's spent, Chef. You know, I'm young. The world is my what oyster. Just I'm spent. Me. Spent? Uh-huh, that's definitely the problem here. Instead of reflecting on her own actions, she took yet another low blow at Nona, attempting to discredit her with even more petty and irrelevant excuses. Her idea of fine dining is fried chicken, chef. She can't cook asparagus, she snores, and it keeps us all awake. Like, hold on for a minute. Is she for real? Sabrina's attempt to manipulate the elimination by bringing personal issues to the forefront not only showcased her lack of professionalism, but also highlighted her willingness to betray a teammate by playing dirty in a competition that should have been about culinary skill, not personal vendettas. During the Italian night service, Sabrina's behavior towards Gail was yet another serious letdown. She was in charge of the grill, but struggled big time with timing, leaving Ramsey and her entire team in the dark. Um, chef, my pork. Just give me a fucking time! Okay, four minutes on Thank my pork, you. chef! Talk to your team now! Yes, chef. Gail attempted to coordinate with Sabrina in spite of it all, but the inconsistent timing threw her off. How long on the second pork? Two 
work, Sabrina? Probably about seven, eight minutes. I don't trust Sabrina at all. She doesn't know her timing. Then, in a move that reeked of betrayal, she knowingly sent her dish out. Even though Gail wasn't ready with her pasta, she told her to wait. We're waiting for the pasta now. It just makes Gail look bad. <laughs> and yeah, everybody heard that. Yeah, it was a deliberate move to make Gail look bad. Plain and simple. Everybody thinks that I'm stupid, but you know what? I'm one manipulative f***er. Sabrina's actions were downright underhanded. Her confession painted her as someone who prioritized herself over the team as a collective. And honestly, who would want to work with someone like that? Instead of focusing on her own strengths during the elimination plea, she chose the path of least integrity. She was more concerned about pointing out others' weaknesses and throwing even more lame excuses out left and right. When it was her turn to speak up, Sabrina attempted to justify her spot by exaggerating her supposedly good performances, all the while conveniently using her inexperience as a safety net. Who would you rather have work for you? Somebody who has a title of an executive chef or somebody who hasn't been doing it this long? But Ramsey wasn't having any of it. He called her out, absolutely destroying her for using using her inexperience as an excuse. Don't use that inexperience excuse on me ever again. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that was never gonna work. And by the way, this was something he made abundantly clear in previous seasons. I don't give two f**ks about how much experience you've got. What I do care about is who has the magic, who has it. Sabrina's pleas throughout the entire season were a disaster. Her over-the-top drama and all-too-common deflection absolutely stunk of immaturity and a lack of accountability. Instead of, you know, showing genuine passion or a willingness to learn from mistakes, she relied on empty excuses and pointed fingers. A hell of an unfortunate duo, if I've ever seen one. Now, let's talk about the time when Zacky pulled the wackiest move on Ray in season 11. You see, right from the prep phase before the 11th service, when Ray offered his help, Zack blatantly ignored him, causing frustration among his teammates, including Anthony, who wasn't happy about Zack's sluggishness. Let's go, Zack. Can't be dragging ass. He needs to snap the hell out of it. Yeah, blatant disregard for teamwork and camaraderie. During the private dinner service, Zack's attempt to assist Ray on plating ended disastrously. Ramsey and Ray noticed Zack's sloppy plate with minimal pasta and no lobster. Hey, Zack, look at that, and look at that. There's no lobster in there, Zack. But you should be leaving this then. Tell it! This frustrated Ray, who rightfully questioned Zack's commitment, leading to a heated exchange. Zack, do me a favor. Fuck off from me, please. Take it over here, you're killing me. You're killing me. Try to throw me under the bus. During a refire, Ray requested him to finish cooking the lobster in butter. Zack retaliated by sabotaging it cooking it in a cold sauce instead. Earlier, Chef Ray tells me to f off. And now I'm definitely gonna get revenge. I'm trying to sabotage him. Yeah, quite openly at that. Hey, come here, just touch that. It's cold! Ray is cold! This sabotage not only angered Ramsey, who obviously rejected the cold lobster, but also incited Ray's fury towards Zack for undermining the entire team. Later, when leading the New York strip course, Zack seemed really disinterested when John was asking about the sauce. Zack, where's your sauce at? Why can't he talk? He's not answering me, he's completely switched off. Ramsey saw that the steaks weren't being seasoned like the red teams from a mile away, which sparked a confrontation, with Zack clumsily trying to defend himself and Ramsey accusing him of lying. We seasoned on No, are you lying? You did not slice it and season it. <sighs> it's always the seasoning, isn't it? And he really thought he could fool Ramsey. Go ahead and add his name to the list of the hundreds that came before him who've tried and failed. But in short, Zack's betrayal showed a complete lack of respect and teamwork. His actions not only disrupted service, but disrespected the hell out of his teammates, especially Ray. I'm so f pissed at Zack. I'm like, dude, you just, you f me. But with all that being said, I really have no idea how this happened. Ray, please give me your jacket. Yeah, sure. 
Ray often faces rightful criticism for his performance, but his elimination that night in favor of keeping Zack around was utterly absurd. Ramsey caught Zack red-handed, deliberately trying to sabotage Ray, yet Ray got sent home over him? Gotta say, Ramsey, I do not understand the logic here. Unless you're looking for a deceitful head chef? Moving on, let's look at what happened during season 16's third service. During prep, she refused to communicate and openly stated that she wasn't in the mood to work, which really got under Aziza, Wendy, and Heather's skin. You notice I just doing a whole lot of nothing? We're watching it the whole time. This lack of commitment and effort set a negative tone right from the start. What you working on? I don't know. I'm not in a mood right now. That's very lacy of her, pun intended. During dinner service, Gia's performance at the meat station was marred by inconsistencies and questionable actions. While her first attempt at the lamb was acceptable, her next one was overcooked. It's like feel, it's overcooked. Hello, an absolute Meltdown. Her refire attempts were no better, culminating in Ramsey's shock at her Wellingtons being horrendously sliced. I've never ever in the history of Hell's Kitchen been given a Wellington that's not even, not even sliced. Oh, and he wasn't done. It's like some bad from the woods, the most expensive cut anywhere in the world. And look at the way it's dumped. Who gave me this? What followed was a feeble attempt to excuse her blunder by claiming she nearly cut her finger off prompting Ramsey to call for medical assistance. Sorry, I cut my finger off, Chef. You cut your finger off? Yes. Show me. Check out the medic. Medic! However, Ramsey's attempt to verify her injury exposed Gia's ruse. Despite her claims of a near finger amputation, there was no visible cut or any blood on her finger at all. Where's the cut? Where's the cut? Right here. Where? It's not there. So she wanted an easy way out. The red team lost the service, and during deliberations, this happened. But who's volunteering themselves to go up tonight? I'll do it. I'll do it. I Eventually, Jen volunteered, and Gia was nominated. I'm not an arguer. I hate arguing. I lived with that in my family, and I just don't like it. But Jessica's plea for staying in Hell's Kitchen really shed light on her personal struggles. She admitted to nominating herself out of a deep-rooted fear of arguments a trauma rooted in her past experiences of growing up in a household filled with constant conflict. This revelation hinted at a potential battle with PTSD, resulting from her dysfunctional family environment. It seems that her coping mechanism involved avoiding disputes, making her self-nomination a means to dodge future potential conflicts within the team. On the flip side, here's what Gia said. Anytime I'm in the kitchen, I'm working hard, always ready to help one of my teammates. I don't never come in here with an attitude. Hey, you know you were being recorded, right? We saw you stand and give up on your team during prep because, oh, not in the mood. But wait, she had more to add. She's already packed. I'm not packed. I'm ready to stay here. This move to spill dorm secrets to Ramsey didn't earn her any popularity points. She was seen as a rat for not upholding team solidarity. Jessica, you've packed. You are not ready to head to Vegas. Despite Ramsey's earlier stance on dorm issues, meaning he clearly said that he didn't care about what goes on in the dorms, his choice to ax Jessica over Gia's betrayal seemed unjust and went against his own stated policy. I guess what I'm trying to say is that these events brought Ramsey's fairness into question. Jessica's struggles and her coping mechanism should have been considered more empathetically especially since her performance wasn't notably worse than Gia's. I genuinely couldn't grasp what Ramsey saw in Gia. To me, it seemed like one of the most straightforward decisions on the show to eliminate her. However, instead of Gia leaving, Jessica went home instead. Sure, Jessica's mistake in packing was bad, but she only messed up one plate throughout that whole service. Her other services showed improvement, either performing well or bouncing back after a slip-up. On the other hand, Gia lied about her finger injury and completely messed up the meat. I mean, come on, it's night and day. But I'm curious what your take on all of this is. Meanwhile, let me hop over to the next topic. Now, in Season 9, following a challenging service, Ramsey tasked the final five chefs with a crucial decision, nominating two individuals for elimination. 
Elise orchestrated a calculated move. She individually approached both Will and Paul, artfully persuading them to consider Jennifer as the weakest link among the remaining chefs. I am asking you for a favor. When I go up there, I'm gonna put Jennifer as the weakest because she is. Typical high school shit. Just say that in front of everyone. Why the backhandedness? She was only looking out for herself by pitting the others against Jennifer like that. I'm being diplomatic and I'm asking you to look out for me because I will look out for you. I know you're better than me. God, how low was she willing to go? But Jennifer was wise to Elise's sly tactics. Confident in her own abilities and considering herself superior to Elise in various aspects, she hoped that Paul and Will would see through Elise's manipulation. After all the she's put us through, Will and Paul are smart enough not to fall for Elise's One can only hope. The deliberation turned into a tense chess game as Ramsey probed the chefs for their nominations. Who is the weakest chef? Come on, man, it's an easy answer. But Paul struggled to make a definitive choice first, prompting Will to abruptly lend his support to Elise as the stronger chef, much to Jennifer's and frankly my disbelief. Solely based on cooking, chef? Uh, Pure I, cooking. I think Elise is a stronger cook than Jennifer. Is. It was tough to watch. Eventually, Paul sided with Elise as being the stronger cook too. Who's the worst cook? Jennifer Chef. You Thank are you. Kidding me? I'm, just, I'm being honest. At least Tommy didn't give in to the pressure and did the right thing by saying that Elise was the weakest link. This sequence of events culminated in the heartbreaking elimination of Jennifer. Despite her undeniable talent and consistent performance throughout the competition, the strategic manipulation orchestrated by Elise and the wavering decisions of her fellow contestants led to Jennifer's unjust departure. I can't believe you two would actually sit here and say say that she is better than me. I am. And fans weren't happy. Everyone agreed that Jennifer should have stayed instead. And I mean, hear, hear. Will and Paul were manipulated to backstab Jennifer, but it's not like they didn't have any personal motive in this. Jennifer was obviously the better chef and therefore the biggest threat. At least Tommy had integrity and wanted to have an equal fight in the end. What do you think? Be sure to drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'm genuinely curious. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this video was crazy, make sure to check out the next one right here. It's even better.